Hello guys and welcome to my Magicka Nightblade PvP build and commentary. This is a really high damage Torx packed Magicka Nightblade build with quite an impressive amount of sustain on it as well. I've enjoyed playing this build in PvP. It is absolutely fantastic for gank gameplay, fantastic for small scale, fantastic for any kind of solo gameplay. So there you have it. Absolutely incredible damage on this build too. So let's take a look at the build guys start on our destro staff we're gonna buff up too so you can see everything minus our enchant buff off of our resto staff we've got 39k max magicka on this build 2800 spell damage now this is not including the 800 that we get off our restoration staff here so we go up to 3600 spell damage on this build with the 3,900 Max Magicka. So this build has pretty decent offensive stats, but it hits really, really hard. And a big part of that is the Torx Pact that we're wearing on this build. It has pretty strong offensive stats outside of Torx, but Torx is going to make it even more powerful. Coming in at 50% crit, not bad at all. Um, 23, almost 24k max health on this spec. When we switch to our resto bar, 26k max health. So we got quite a nice HP pool, especially for wearing light armor. Uh, 13k max stamina. Our recoveries, we've got around 1800 Magicka recovery. It changes when we swap bars. Resto staff has better recovery here. And we have 1037 stamina recovery. Uh, our physical and spell resistances are not super high. When we buff up, we've got 1,500 physical and 19,751 spell resistance. 2,400 crit resist, so we went real heavy on the crit resist to kind of offset the fact that we don't have a lot of physical and spell resist on this build as well. And let's take a look at the uh, boons we have on the build. For the Mundus, I am running the Apprentice. Um, the Lover is also a good option here for the Penetration, as it will increase your enchant damage, but I wanted to go with the Apprentice because it would also increase my healing at the loss of uh, increasing that enchant damage. So it's either the Apprentice or the Lover if you rather have better heals or better enchants. Up to you. We are a stage 4 vampire on this build, guys. I picked vampirism for this build because we're not actually running a defensive damage shield. So undeath is actually going to make us a little bit tankier here. We're using the healing ward as our primary heal. So undeath plays a big part of healing ward because healing ward, when you cast it, you're definitely going to have undeath working for you as well. So vampirism plays big part into that. Not only this, but we have pretty decent sustain on this build. This is a rather glass cannon Magicka Nightblade build. It hits really, really really hard um, but it has pretty good sustain as well we're not just going to run out of magicka right away after our initial burst which is really nice um, and vampirism gives us that 10 percent bonus to our regen so it plays into that as well health regeneration gets lowered not a huge deal health regen not a big deal for this build for the food we're using witch mother's potent brew this is going to give us a magicka recovery max magicka and max health you can always go with the clockwork citrus fillet which is the gold version of the witch mother's brew and it's a little bit better at that much more expensive cost and then finally guys for the potions on this build the pots that you want to use are Alliance Spell Droughts. And this is just because we don't have access to Major Sorcery on the build, so we need to get it from our potions. Um, and these are nice because you can pretty much just pay for them with the PvP that you do. They're real easy to get your hands on, and real easy access to that Major Sorcery buff, also giving you a little bit of bonus to your Magicka recovery as well. If you want to use really nice pots, you can craft your own potions that give you Max Magicka, Major Sorcery, and Stealth Detection. Now, the Stealth Detection is really nice on the Magblade. It's going to make fighting other Nightblades really easy. Um, so, there you have it. Uh, just a little bit more expensive if you want to run the Detect Pots. They do the same thing as the Spell Droughts, but give you the Detection on top of it. Let's take a look at the gear we're running on this build, guys. We're going to start off with our Torugs Pact. The first five piece that we're running, five piece Torx pack, spell damage, max health, spell resistance, decreases weapon enchantment cooldown, and increases potency by 30%. That is huge. We are running dual infused Torx weapons with Torx pact. Let's buff up so you can see this. 6,508 shock damage tooltip on my Torx Pact. This can crit. Not only can it crit, but on top of it, this enchant also has a chance of applying minor vulnerability to your target, increasing the amount of damage that they take by 8%. So this is a really, really, really powerful, powerful 
powerful enchant. I cannot stress how strong this is. You guys will see in the gameplay how powerful the enchant is off of our Torx packed staff here, but it is so, so great. So it's very important for this build. We run the infused staff with that shock damage enchant. Now, on our flip side for our Torx, we have the restoration staff, and this is also infused. We are running Torx. And we've got the weapon spell damage enchant coming in at 587 increased weapon and spell damage on this build. That equates to around 800 increased spell damage for this spec. So a huge boost to our spell damage from landing a resto light attack as well. And then finally, the last thing to mention about this set is that both of these enchants are on a 1.5 second cooldown. So you can actually proc them a lot during a fight. Something to note about the destruction staff in general is that if you just light attack weave, you will not get a Torx proc every time. If you partially hold your heavy and then let it go just as it starts to charge, you will get the enchant every time. So you need to break up your light attack weaves just a little bit to ensure your Torx proc every single time. If you do back-to-back -back light attacks, they will not both land. Um, so for the rest of the gear, guys, we are running Amber Plasm as a five piece. This is going to be used for the Max Magicka spell crit spell damage, great for our outgoing damage, and then the Stamina and Magicka recovery, very important, uh, especially for light armor PvP. We could have gone full glass cannon on this spec, but putting Amber Plasm here allows us to have some serious playability, some serious uh, escape ability with this build as well. So I think this is the best set to pair with the Torgs for this build, simply because it makes it a full build and not just a gank build. Um, so this is a great set for that sustain. For the enchants, we've got full spell damage on the Amberplasm as well. And then finally, the last piece we're running is a one-piece Dama House. This is going to give us max stamina and max magicka. Max magicka, great for our damage. Stamina, great for our sustain. The stamina pool can be a bit of an issue for magicka builds in PvP, so having Dama House on, I think, is absolutely fantastic. For the traits on the gear, guys, we've gone with four pieces of impenetrable and three pieces of well-fitted. We do quite a bit of dodge rolling on this build. Try not to get stunned if we can. Try to just avoid all incoming damage to our best ability. Um, so that's why we've got the three well fitted on and of course impen is going to help buff up our defensive capabilities as well for the enchants guys i would highly recommend you try stat glyph or hacky joe glyph your big pieces so they give you all of the max stats magicka health and stamina and i say this because the stamina pool comes in real handy and the health pool comes in real handy for pvp health's going to save you from getting ganked stam's going to save you from running out of stam so having that extra stamina in your pool really comes in handy guys i would highly recommend going for the try stat glyphs if you can and then on the little pieces, we've went with just the Max Magicka Glyphs. Alright, so let's take a look at those skills, guys. Let's take a peek at it. On our Destruction Staff Bar, the first ability we have is Swallow Soul. So this is a ranged build. A majority of the abilities we use on this build, minus our ultimates, are ranged. Um, so they are going to hit really hard from a distance. You can actually, like nuke 20k HP players from 30 meters away on this build and just cloak and continue on on your merry way. So very, very powerful. I love Swallow Soul for a couple reasons. Number one, it's going to act as our heal over time, which is pretty sweet because we don't have a heal over time on this build. Number two, it's going to give us minor vitality, increasing the heals we receive. Also very sweet. And then number three, it's very, very, very cheap. 1,702 Magicka for this ability. You can pretty much spam it indefinitely on this build, and you'll never run out of Magicka. Um, but most of all, it is just kind of our spiky distance ability. When we need to put some serious damage into someone with a spiky hit, we're going to use Swallow Soul at the distance. The next ability we have is Flame Reach. I went with the Reach Morph because it has the extra range. I thought the range was much worth in PvP, much more so than the uh, bonus dot damage, which is actually quite negligible. It's 6k dot damage right now. If you go for the bonus dot damage, it only goes up to 7k, so it doesn't increase the damage that much. This is your primary stun for the build. You're going to use it to set lots of combos and, of course, stun an opponent when you need to land that stun. It's nice because it gives the dot as well. Too many times I've dropped a player to 1% HP and the dot ends up finishing them off before I can get the second light attack off. So good stuff to have that dot on our stun as well. Um, the downside is it's pretty expensive, so you don't want to spam it too terribly much if you can help it. Uh, the Crippling Grasp is our next ability here. This is going to be access to our Major Expedition. It's going to be a snare for our opponents, a massive damage over time as well, and an Immobilize. So it's a really good ability. I'd highly recommend running it on any Mag Blade because it gives you easy access to that Major Expedition as well as being an offensive skill on top of it. Um, I like using Crippling Gra Grasp and Flame Reach together when I'm trying to take down a tankier target. The dots really come in handy. 
Okay, so the next ability we have is Merciless Resolve. This is going to give us access to Minor Berserk, giving us that 8% damage increase. Most important damage buff I think we can run. And then finally, we have the uh, special effect of Merciless Resolve. Hitting an enemy with 5 light or heavy attacks changes this ability to Assassin's Will, allowing you to fire a single shot to deal 18 1407 magic damage and snaring them 40 percent let's buff up and we're gonna pot so you guys can see just how high the tooltip gets here almost 21k tooltip not including our staff buff would bring us up to 22k compared to our soul harvest coming in at 16.5 so you can see that this is by far our hardest hitting single target ability on this build merciless resolve and it's quite easy to get it to proc we're going to do lots of light attack weaving because we're running soul or because we're running torx pact so merciless resolve works really well a little fun fact about this ability if you cast it once in the 20 second duration if you manage to get five light attacks off and then shoot the bow and get another five light attacks off before the original duration is over you can actually shoot two bows you can shoot multiple arrows out of the bow before you have to redo the buff itself so just a little fun fact if you guys want to maybe fire multiple of those arrows at a distance and then finally the last ability we have here is inner light this is going to give us a bit of a max magic boost give us our major prophecy buff and of course give us access to stealth detection if you're running the detect pots this gives your detect pots a massive stealth detection radius making it a very very strong ability when used in conjunction with those detect pots so there you have it inner light just a very uh, very great stealth detection slash buff skill and then for the ultimate on this build, guys, we have Soul Harvest. I know a lot of mag blades like to go for incapacitating strike, but look at this tooltip damage difference. We're playing a damage build. I'm not about to go for in cap for the stun. We have the stun off the fire staff at the distance. We don't need in cap for it. So I decided to go with Soul Harvest. I really like Soul Harvest. While slotted, you gain additional ultimate when you get kills. That's a huge deal. This pretty much means that once you're once you've leveled your Alliance War up to rank 10, as you can see here, and you get access to your final passives, which is the Combat Frenzy, 20 ultimate for killing a player. You can drop a soul ultimate, kill a player, get 30 ultimate back right off the bat just for the kill. And, I mean, you get your next soul, soul harvest up so fast. Very, very powerful ultimate. And not only that, you don't have to use the soul harvest to get the ultimate gain. So even if I'm just getting kills with my other abilities here, it's going to help my ultimate gain, which is really sweet as well. Soul harvest also nice because it will afflict major defile to the target, reducing their health recovery and their healing received, as well as increasing your outgoing damage against them by 20% for 6 seconds. So soul harvest into heavy offensive pressure is almost always a great way to kill a target. Let's take a look at the other bar, guys. First ability we have is Shadow Image. This is a great ability. It's going to apply Minor Maim to your target, reducing their damage by 15%. Always throw your Shadow Image on the most heavily damaging opponent that you can find, because it's just going to make them do less damage to you. Um, not only that, it'll deal a little bit of damage while it's on the target, but the big thing about Shadow Image is your ability to teleport back to it after you cast it. This is great because it effectively makes Magnite Blade able to get out of those snare traps that oh so kill Magnite Blades all the time. When you get caught in that heavy snare trap and you've got a lot of snares, a lot of immobilize, a lot of AoE, Shade is the best way to teleport out of there because you're not going to be able to cloak out. So I absolutely love this ability for Magnite Blade. I think it's an absolute must-have. Have. One thing that I will say is that during this patch, Shade does not work properly, and it only seems to be working around half the time. Um, it is unfortunate that it's kind of broken right now, but it will get fixed in the future, so I would highly recommend using it for this build. The next ability we have is Efficient Purge. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're running Efficient Purge. I've said this so many times. Magnite Blade has to run Purge. I think it's such a great skill for a Mag Blade. Comes in so handy in PvP, especially World PvP. Remove two negative effects from yourself and then decrease the duration of any further negative effects by 50% for 6 seconds. This is nice because not only can it help you get back into stealth when someone marks you, etc., but it's also going to be great to just remove negative effects on you. If you get heavily dotted up by a Mag DK, for example, one Purge is just going to is just going to remove mo like two of his dots and it's going to make all the other effects that he put on you um have much less of a duration as well so really strong move i absolutely cannot get by playing my magnite blade without purge i don't know how people do it i think purge is so great on the mag blade it comes in so handy highly recommend it and then we've got healing ward guys this is the only 
heal that we use on this build, minus the passive healing from our Swallow Soul. Going just for that big time healing ward, man. And we don't run a damage shield. Like I said, we're a little squishier if we get caught out of stealth, a little squishier if we get caught with a good gank. So that's why we have such a great stealth uptime on this build. We're playing that stealth game. Healing ward's going to be that oh shit heal when you need it. It's nice because we are a vampire, so undeath will play into the fact that our healing ward um, will be a little bit stronger. And of course, Healing Ward's nice because if no one attacks you when you cast it, it's pretty much a full health heal. It is very expensive though, so you cannot tank for a very long time spamming Healing Wards. This build can tank pretty decently with some Healing Ward spam, but you want to ultimately try to move out of that location and only tank as long as you need to. The next ability we have is Concealed Weapon. Right? What's this doing on our resto bar? This is straight up just here for movement speed. We don't even use it. We're using the fire staff as our primary stun. It's actually a better bet, I think, um, because it is on our flame staff bar as well anyway. So concealed weapon, we're just here for that 25% sneaking and invisible movement speed. And then, of course, we got Dark Cloak. Dark Cloak's going to give you 2.9 seconds of invisibility, which is great. Nightblade Stealth OP. And we're running the Dark Cloak more for that minor protection. Now, we could have gone with the uh, with the guaranteed crit from Stealth, but there's a few reasons why I didn't do it. Number one, we're running a Torx Pack build. So the heavy attack will be a guaranteed crit then, but the Torx Pact Enchant will not be. And the Torx Pact Enchant makes up around 30% of our heavy attack damage anyway. So we're kind of missing out on that part from the guaranteed crit. Um, number two, we're sitting at 50% crit, so crit's not a huge issue on this build. We're going to be landing a lot of crits anyway, so we don't have to really worry about it. And then finally, minor protection, man. Minor protection's a huge deal. That'll stack with our undeath from vampirism, making us harder to kill when we use our healing wards as well. So there you have it. Great ability, Dark Cloak. And then for the ultimate on this bar, guys, I went with Soul Tether. And I went with Soul Tether simply because it's a great AoE defensive alt. When a bunch of players jump on you, especially as a Magblade, it can be hard to deal with. And Soul Tether is an excellent answer to a lot of players on top of you at the same time. Uh, so there you have it. That's why I've chosen to run it. Used it in quite a few fights. Got some pretty cheeky 1vx Soul Tether kills as well. So it works really well on this build. Uh, tether into the Destro Staff and Light Attack sw Swallow Soul and just nuke somebody. Can catch them really off guard. Now, it's not going to hit as hard as our Soul Harvest, unfortunately, but it is nice for that AoE stun. Now, regarding ultimates, guys, you can always go for some different ultimates as well. One ultimate that I would recommend for this build, if you want to give it a shot, is Soul Assault. Now, this is nice because it's a ranged ultimate, and you can put it on your offensive bar as well. So this is kind of your alternative to Soul Harvest, going for Soul Assault. And Soul Assault is just going to deal huge amounts of damage at the distance on that channel. So you can use it to really kill players that are rolling away, etc. as well. Uh, that being said, though, you're not going to have, you're not going to put this alt out nearly as much as you will be Soul Harvest, because Soul Harvest really plays into that alt gen on the build. And then finally for our back bar alt, you can always go for the resto alt too if you guys want to. Access to the resto alt is always nice, giving you a little bit of that healing. Um, resto alt's better if you have a lot of players on you at a distance, and soul tether is obviously going to be better if they're on top of you. So that's kind of the trade-off there. Let's do the champion points, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start in the tower tree. 23 warlord, 5 in sprinter. We got to break free and we got to sprint. It's PvP, my friends. In the Lover Tree, we've got 56 Arcanist. Big focus on Magicka Recovery, of course. 37 Mooncalf. That's right, we need some Stam Recovery too, because we are in PvP. And then 23 in Tenacity, um, which is going to increase the amount of resource our heavy attacks return. Tenacity was kind of a call here for me, simply because we're running the Resto Staff, and Resto returns so much resource anyway. Thought I'd put a few points in there. And we've got 7 in Healthy. I just kind of had some points left over. Thought I'd dump them in here. Fuck Vampirism, right? <laughs> Let's take a look at that Shadow Tree. 51 Tumbling, reduce the cost of roll dodge by 19%, and then 26 Shadow Roar, uh, reduce the cost of block by 11%. More focus on Tumbling, of course, because we are running well-fitted. Blocking, we will do occasionally, but it's not a big part of this build. You don't want to block too much if you can help it. And then finally, 2 in Befoul, just to increase the effects of our healing reduction. Not by a huge amount, though. In the Apprentice Tree, we have got a very even spread here. 40, 43, 44. 16% increased crit damage with our spells. 10% uh, increased outgoing damage with our spells. 
and 3,624 spell penetration. Nice even spread here, dumping a lot of points in that tree. Let's take a look at the Atronach tree. We see that we have 66 Master at Arms and 37 in Staff Expert. So I actually went heavier for Master at Arms and less in Staff Expert on purpose for this build. This is simply because the heavy attack portion of our attack doesn't actually deal a huge amount of damage. Most of, like, like I said, a lot of that damage is coming out of that enchant as well. So the Staff Expert wasn't a huge focus here but Master at Arms will increase the enchant damage too, so I thought Master at Arms was the better one to focus on in this tree. Still have a bit in Staff Expert though, because we don't want to neglect our heavies. And we got nothing in the Ritual. In the Steed tree, we've got 61 Ironclad, 63 Resistant, and 3 in Spell Resist. Ironclad being the natural counter to um, our Man at Arm Master at Arms passive here. Reduce incoming direct damage. Most bursty abilities are direct damage, so this is going to reduce the amount of bursts that you take pretty much. Resistant will re reduce the incoming crit damage that you take. Also really great for PvP. And then Spell Shield for a little bit of Spell Resist. Um, in the Lady Tree, we got 23, 23, 16, 23 Hardy for that uh, physical damage decrease by 6%, 23 Elemental for the 6% decreased magic damage, and then a little bit in Thick Skin for that decreased incoming dot damage. And then, of course, we got a couple points in Light Armor fo Focus because we had a few left over as well. Nice even spread here just to decrease that incoming damage. A little bit less focus on the dots simply because we do have Cloak to deal with that dot damage. And then finally, in the Lord Tree, we've got 27 Quick Recovery and 2 in Expert Defender. Just kind of putting them in Quick Recovery for the heals. Hey guys. And welcome to the PvP commentary. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start off with some nasty ganks from Stealth. What do we have here? A player sitting around in Stealth. Just find him walking around here on this keep. So I've been playing around this keep for a little while. The DC know that I'm here. They're kind of looking for me at this point. So I'm being a little bit trolly with that cheeky gank on the one player there. He's not paying attention. Um, we almost get locked down by this DK, but we're just going to cloak, quickly switch directions behind him, and we're just going to walk on out of there and then re-engage so i know that the other nightblade that's popped out of stealth is also close by here notice how i'm keeping uh keeping this dk very dotted up he's going to be really tanky so i've got all my dots running on him try to put as much damage there's the nightblade behind me there we do a roll dodge to dodge the uh snipe into his ambush and we actually managed to cloak out, and we're just going to reset against these guys, re-engage from behind here. Now a few other players have come to join this fight. We have a Sork spamming the uh, the Flare Stealth Detect all over the place. That's tricky to deal with if he hits me with it. So he's kind of going to make himself my first target now. He's going to get this Sork. And lo and behold, look who it is. It's this Sork. Starts throwing the Stealth Detects away. We just back away from him, and we're going to engage him out of Stealth here um, as best we can. Fake going down behind the hill there. See how we fake the hill? He throws the negate where he thinks we were going. We loop back behind him. There's a really nice stun and the light attack into Swallow Soul to bring him down. Beautiful, beautiful kill on that Sork. All about positioning and movement. Just being trolly with that cloak, making yourself hard to lock down. So here we are again. I'm in the field here. We've got these Sorks, two Sorks jumping on top of me. Um... And what looks like a guy on his horse at the moment. Uh, he gets off the horse. Here we go. So we're starting to get beat on. We've got a fourth player coming in there as well. I try hard to use the shade to get away. It doesn't work. They stay on top of me really hard. Go into the tether. Quickly light attack Swallow Soul to actually take one of the players down. And uh, once they're on the defensive there, I kill one player, put one on the defensive, only have the two hitting me. I manage to cloak out reset yet again look at the reset power on this build so easy for us to engage disengage and lo and behold we're going to pick up a nice easy gank here on this guy as he rides by tried to go for the soul assault or the soul harvest off his horse there but unfortunately he was a little bit too far away from me um for me to reach another player comes up here we're going to open on him we get sniped right away so as you can see we got a lot of pressure on us all these players are now very alert to our location so this is something i also wanted to talk about with this build is oh my gosh you're gonna go for the gank again talk about that ability to keep a group of players busy um this build does a great job of keeping a group of players busy they look for you they're going to be searching around even if you just engage with them and just leave you can honestly keep a larger group of players busy for a long period of time even by yourself as you can see here look how many players were waiting in stealth here to kill me five players sitting in stealth trying to find me 
and uh, they finally get me. So let's move on to the next clip. This clip here is going to be a little bit of duo PvP, I believe, with my good friend Jordan. He's playing Ghost right now. Uh, I found that this Magblade build pairs really well with other Kitey builds, other Nightblades, builds like Ghost, medium armor builds that are relatively fast in PvP. This build pairs quite well with. As you can see there, we open with the brutal heavy attack into our ultimate on that guy for a very nasty opening gank. And we find another player here. What we're going to do is just open with the light attack. I actually go for the purge thinking I'm on my Destro staff bar. Um, meant to go for the knockback there. Sometimes you make mistakes though, right? Uh, two players engage with me here. I quickly cloak pull out away from their site here. Three players coming up the hill here. I notice one of them's lower level get a good stun on him. And there you see so much damage come out of that light attack into Swallow Soul just drops that lower level player right away. Um, the other player ends up following me down the side here and I get right behind him yet again. Look at that Nightblade stealth. Gotta use that cloak. Always changing directions. Managed to drop that player as well. Jordan finishes off this other player here who's trying to escape and then we're left with a uh, tankier level 24 player here. You know that up level scale and makes you so tanky sometimes. Another player comes to engage here. I quickly open on him with a lot of damage. Makes sure to dot him up and then go into some swallow souls and he just melts to the pressure he doesn't have anything to uh really respond to it we finish off the last player here very nice uh, little 2VX there with Jordan. And of course, we had that sniper come in at the end too. So here is a three on two. I'm going to be the first to engage Jordan and Stealth behind them on the Templar. There you see I dodge the opening attack from that DK. Um, and I go for a big amount of burst on him after I cloak up. Jordan finishes him with the execute. They're focusing hard on Jordan here, which is great. It's just going to allow me to rotate all my offenses. There you see it just puts so much damage in that DK. Light attack, swallow soul, light attack ultimate and he dies and then we're just left to fight this last templar here running proc sets maybe not the best idea in cyrodiil nowadays but there you have it very fast aggressive 3v2 there quick cleanup look at the damage on that build so now what we're going to do is maybe look at a few little bit of gank clips. So this one here, we go for the gank on this Templar. He responds really well right away going into a dodge roll and then his resto alt. is Thinking I'm going to go in for that big pressure. Seeing the resto alt, I just decide to wait it out. Wait it out in my cloak. Just give him some time. And then I re-engage once his resto alt is down. As you can see, he goes in for the charge. I hold block and then knock him back so he takes the stun and I don't. And then I have him fully dotted here and I just put the pressure on with the Swallow Soul. After the Soul Harvest debuff, it's just too much. He can't outheal it. Too much damage for the Mag Templar to deal with. And then we're left to fight this Nightblade here. Um, this Nightblade also fought fairly well. Uh, so here you can see he's trying to engage on us, but we're just going to play the stealth counter stealth game. We're going to wait till the last second, pop the cloak, dodging the arrows, and then make sure we get on top of him and keep that Mage Light up. We don't want to give him a chance to cloak if he sits on top of me. He goes in for his ult here. I quickly counter with my ultimate, going for the Swallow Soul, um, knowing that I won't be able to stun him, but getting the heal off. And then a couple soul harvest in and he ends up going down unable to uh react to the incoming damage so here are some ganks for you guys oh baby there's the fire staff not back if we had gone for the swallow soul there i think we would have one killed him in the one hit um but we did go for the fire staff knockback took the negate just a simple light attack to take him down. We set the shade down on this DK here. Shade right in behind him. He's looking for me on the other side of that cliff now, so I don't have to worry about him anymore. And we're going to pick off, hopefully, another player here. There it is. Very nice kill on him there. Just showcasing the ganks. few of those ganks we can do on this build. It's very, very fun. So for the last clip, uh, second last clip here, we've got another solo clip with the Nightblade. As you can see, I ran into this uh, tankier player here, and he ends up just disengaging, running off the cliff. So I then engage with this Nightblade. He responds well. He goes for the roll dodge, and then right into Cloak. I counter with my Mage Light to pull him out of stealth, and then I quickly get him with a nice combo coming out of Cloak, and as he crit rushes into me, I drop the second Light Attack Soul Harvest, so he's unable to dodge it, and he ends up going down during his crit rush. The second lower level player there just kind of dies. Another Nightblade comes in to help me out here. A level 36 Stam Blade to help me out. Love it, love it. He's taking a bit of pressure from the Warded. Um, so I just pulled the focus right back to me here. Uh, 
as you can see, look at that damage. Just so much distance damage, and they not, they're just not really sure what to do. They have to keep their defenses up 100%, or they're not going to survive it. And this warden here, we've got another uh, friendly player that's kind of come in, just beaten on this tanky warden from before, I guess. And here we go. I go for the cloak. Unfortunately, I take the fear at quite a long distance from the player. Um... That's too bad, but I still managed to escape, jumping off the cliff, and we're just going to reset here and re-engage with these guys. Here comes a player coming up on his horse. Heavy attack into the ultimate one shot right off the horse brutal brutal this guy's looking for me how dare he we do the fire staff knockback into the light attack heavy attack fire staff knockback light attack into the sw swallow soul and drop him now on these players here you see how i loop around the rocks cast purge to make sure that nothing really dots me up or anything and then i stealth and change directions and that's going to ensure that i manage to escape that location without them knowing where i am because they're going to go look the wrong way and they're never going to find me then as you can see here in this last clip, we've got a little bit of an open on those players from the back there. You see I managed to pick a player off quite easily as he's repairing the walls there, lower health player. And we attract a little bit of attention up here. One Templar comes up. I end up knocking him down, but he's just going to come right back around. And I'm just going to reset here, make sure that uh, we can hit him with some burst. He's quite a high rank Templar, so I'm expecting him to be pretty tanky to take down. As you can see, Jordan's here with me too in this clip, so it'll be a quite easy takedown to bring this Templar down. Still very tanky, still very tanky, but uh, a little bit too much pressure coming from our high DPS builds for him. And we managed to finish him off. And that is our bait. Simple as simple, right? We're just going to wait. We're just going to wait. Here come a couple more players. I open with a weird heavy attack on one player, fire staff knockback on the other player. Not really sure why I missed that so bad. This guy goes for his Destro ultimate, and as you can see, he tries to go for the res in it. I'm just going to knock him back. I don't want to jump in there. Like uh, like I've said in the build video, this build is not super tanky, so you want to be careful. Um, I'm a little bit low HP. Respond with the tether. Actually get some awesome burst on these guys. Jordan comes in on the low HP target, spamming the execute on him. Ends up taking that guy down. Gets a good knockback on the second guy. We take him down as well. So and here is the last gank of the video. This guy's trying to get in the keep. The same keep fright from earlier. We're going to deny him the entry to the keep and as you can see all the players are still in this keep they're still looking for us so what ends up happening is me and Jordan just stay stealth for a little bit while longer and then we pop out of stealth and notice that nobody is left in this keep and they just hand us a free keep flip which is absolutely fantastic thank you guys for tuning in hope you like the build and feel free to hit that like and subscribe button